Hey guys, this is Srini and you're watching uh, the basic Python tutorials on my channel Python for Microscopists on uh, YouTube. And uh, these videos are for beginner programmers who are uh, uh, students, researchers and uh, you know image processing enthusiasts who would like to use Python uh, to automate their image processing tasks. And uh, in today's tutorial, we would be talking about pillow library for image processing. And uh, in the previous tutorial, we learned that there are various ways of importing images and there are various libraries, including uh, OpenCV, scikit-image, scikit-learn, NumPy, and so on. And pillow is one of these that is dedicated for uh, image processing. Uh, although I should mention for basic image processing, but that is necessary, you know, for uh, like image cropping, image rotation, changing the color spaces and all of that. If you are interested in uh, uh, doing advanced image processing like segmentation or object uh, recognition using machine learning, then uh, there are dedicated pieces of uh, uh, libraries like OpenCV, uh, Scikit-Image, Scikit-Learn, and NumPy also has a lot of tools, you know, for, uh, you know, if you want to do a lot of math on your images. <clears throat> But pillow is for uh, basic tasks and the tasks that I am going to talk about in today's tutorial uh, it's it's uh, of course starting off with reading images using uh, pillow and then uh, we'll change the size of these images and uh, do some cropping and pasting and uh, of course uh, rotating transposing you know flipping these images uh, also uh, transforming the color spaces and uh, Finally, automating the tasks, you know, let's pick one of the tasks and then automate that onto a bunch of images uh, uh, in a folder. So let's go ahead and get started. And this is our spider interface, again, part of Anaconda distribution. I love this interface because it comes with most of the libraries preloaded that, uh, that uh, I at least use on a regular basis. <clears throat> and it's easy, uh, very well laid out and easy to uh, understand. So first thing first, let me go ahead and zoom my left hand side. Again, I haven't figured out how to zoom the right hand side, so I'll try to digitally zoom in whenever needed. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and start by reading an image. Uh, and uh, uh, first you need to import pillow. And how do you import pillow? It is uh, import PIL. But instead of importing the entire library, I would actually uh, import from PIL, import image, okay? And image actually enables us to load our uh, uh, images. So I'm gonna define a variable called IMG and I'm gonna assign that to an image. So I want to open an image now and where do I want to open it from? And in my file explorer within images, uh, I, would, I would open this test underscore image dot JPEG. And the way I would do that is images slash test underscore image dot JPG. Okay, so this opens the image and I should mention that this image is not a NumPy array. In pillow, when you open images, it's not a NumPy array by default. You can convert that if you want, but it's not a, a NumPy array by default. And in fact, you can find that out by uh, checking the image type. And let me go ahead and type it. And on the right hand side, you can see this is just, uh, if it is a NumPy array, it would actually say that right here, ND array. So <clears throat> this is not a NumPy array. So but, uh, now we loaded the image and uh, you can also, again, do a couple of things like uh, find the image format, for example. You can actually type uh, img.format. It tells you exactly the format of this image. This is a JPEG image in this case. And you can also mention uh, the image mode. <coughs> this is a red, green, and blue image. Of course, you know, the other mode would be a grayscale, for example. So you can check out the image mode and you can, uh, while we are doing this, let's also look at uh, the image size, yeah? So image size, image dot size, which is 639 by uh, 513 uh, in this case. Uh, and uh, this prints the image size as width and height, okay? The width is 639 pixels and height is uh, 513 pixels. Now, 
Uh, now that we know the image size, let's actually keep that uh, over there. Let's resize, let's start by resizing this. So let's call this small underscore image or resized image equals to IMG, that's what we called our image right there. So IMG dot resize, okay? And what is the new resize, uh, you know, dimensions? Let's just say 200 by 300 because uh, I wanna make the image, well, we'll see uh, what this means. Uh, so now that I, I uh, have done this, we can open this image and have a look at it, but let's go ahead and save it. So SMAL, small image, and the way you save this onto your disk is dot save, okay? And then you just tell exactly where to save. Image, uh, let's save it in the same folder, images, and then let's call this test image small, okay? Uh, well, let's give an extension of JPEG. <clears throat> And uh, now let's go ahead and run this program. Now you see that there is a test underscore image underscore small which just got created right now. And uh, let me open the folder to see where it is. Uh, there it is. So the original image looks like this. <laughs> uh, it opened on my other screen, so let me drag it here. And the new image, the resized image, looks like this. So you can see it actually took the original image and just squished it into, into 200 by 300. So it resized it, but then it didn't keep the aspect ratio. So, or it didn't crop, it didn't do any of that. It just squished it. Uh, very rarely do we need that. I mean, this, uh, so what can we do to actually resize it into a, uh, into, by keeping the aspect ratio? For that, it's weird, but they call it, uh, 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 image thumbnail. So if you just do image dot thumbnail, and now we can type the dimensions. Let's go ahead and type exactly the same dimensions. Image dot thumbnail, 200 by 300, and uh, let's actually go ahead and save this. Image dot save again, uh, because when I do image dot thumbnail, it's actually resizing it in place i'm not assigning this to any other uh, any other parameter uh, or variable uh, in this case i'm just resizing it in place and i'm going to save this image dot save equals to uh, images slash um, let's just call this uh, test underscore image underscore d m b n a i l dot jpeg okay so let's, uh, let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So now we should see another image called uh, test image thumbnail. And uh, this, uh, here it is. So test image thumbnail, it looks exactly like the original image except the dimensions are uh, different. As you can see, I mean, it shows up smaller here. If you want, we can copy that and then paste it here and just run this one more time. And you can see the new image dimensions are 200 by 160. I actually mentioned 200 by 300, but then it resized it to 200 by 160 because it takes this first width and then it's actually just resizing it and keeping the aspect ratio as is. So that's what the thumbnail uh, thumbnail does. If you don't, if you just use resize, then it, it doesn't care. It just fits it, uh, resizes it or compresses the image or squishes the image to fit the size that you actually mentioned. <coughs> so, uh, Actually, one other thing, uh, even when you blow up, like for example, if I do image dot, uh, th uh, let's uh, modify the existing one. So image dot thumbnail, what if I just do uh, 1200 by 1300? The original image is 600 by three, uh, 600 something by 500 something. Now I wanna blow it up, you know, to 1200 by uh, 1300 or 1200 by 1200. Let's overwrite this image uh, uh, and uh, go ahead and run this. Uh, let's close the, existing window and let's run it. Now you see, uh, I can open this image, but we can see right away that this image is not 1200 by 1300. It's indeed 639 by 513. So when you use this thumbnail, uh, then uh, if the image, if what you're asking for is larger than the image size, then it's not gonna do it, okay? And if you ask for something that's smaller than your size, then it's going to take the width and then scales everything accordingly, okay? 
So that's what the thumbnail does. And in fact, uh, while we are doing this, let's go ahead and test it for 1200 by 1300 when you do image resize. And uh, let's copy this image size over here and run only this part of the code. <coughs> and you see the size, uh, well, let's go ahead and open the size of this uh, new image, which is test small, test image small, test image small. So when I open this image, you can see that this is uh, resized. If you cannot see that, actually, uh, the mistake I did here is small underscore image. I just typed image. That's why we see image size 639 by 513, because that's the original image. I want to see the image size for this resized image. So let's go ahead and run this one more time. And it should say 1200 by 1300. So you can blow this image up. It looks very pixelated. Uh, and then it resizes to whatever size. Anyway, the lesson here is resize here is going to resize it to whatever you ask it to do. It doesn't care if the image is going to be distorted. Thumbnail is going to do it if uh, it's smaller than the original size, first of all. And even then, it keeps the aspect ratio. It uh, only looks at the width first and then resizes the height to whatever based on the aspect ratio. So <coughs> anyway, that's uh, basically uh, resizing the images. now. Let's look at uh, cropping these images. And again, I like to start everything from scratch so we don't mix this uh, uh, code here. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and read the same image again, uh, except now let's crop this. So I'm gonna call it cropped image equals uh, IM, we called it IMG. And the function here is dot crop, as you can imagine, yeah? Dot uh, crop and uh, uh, I believe for a crop, I'm thinking about what the, uh, how the, I've, uh, I haven't done this in a while, but uh, I think the, uh, it, the first two coordinates are zero, zero. Let's say we start at top left. Uh, this is X and uh, the format, I think I just continue here. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's crop like a big section, uh, 300, 300. And this is how uh, it crops. And then let's go ahead and save this uh, cropped underscore image and we know how to do this dot save and then where do we want to save it images slash and uh, let's just call this cropped underscore image dot jpeg okay so when we run this code now yeah i guess the format is correct over there and it should open it should save this uh, as a uh, cropped crop right there cropped image dot jpeg and let's go ahead and look that uh, look at that image cropped as you can see right away i don't even need to open that this uh, in fact it makes sense to open it and compare how it cropped uh, i should change the viewer on my windows whatever the viewer default viewer it's using uh, it tends to be very slow so you see the cropped image is nothing but the image from zero zero over there and 300 pixels this way 300 pixels this way okay and you can uh, control the crop obviously by changing changing the uh, changing the width and changing the coordinates over there. Now uh, we can actually uh, well instead of cropping we can copy and we can paste these images uh, uh, into uh, a different image. So the way we do that is uh, uh, so instead of uh, cropping working on the same thing. Uh, let's actually open two images. So first thing first, let's actually again find out what the size of this image is. Uh, image dot uh, uh, size. And this image is 639 by 513. So let's actually import another image that's smaller than this image and then uh, uh, copy and paste that onto this specific image. So since I'm going to import another image, I'm going to call this image one. And then let's uh, import another one that's uh, I'm going to call this image two and image dot open uh, images slash uh, let's import something that doesn't look uh, same as these other ones looks like i have all my images that look kind of very similar let's just take this monkey dot jpeg image i know this is smaller in fact i just searched this image on google you know and i wanted some image and then just downloaded that so monkey dot uh, jpeg and uh, and let's go ahead and print the image size uh, for monkey.jpg. Uh, so let me go ahead and, and paste it here. And this is image two, and this would be image one. Let's go ahead and run it. 
So the first image 639, 513, second image 220 by 330. Okay, so uh, this, is, uh, this is a good one. And in fact, if the second image is large, you can actually resize it, right? I mean, it's, it doesn't stop us from, uh, from doing that. So I can go ahead and do, uh, let's, let's uh, for the fun of it, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, image two dot, uh, let's use thumbnail image 2 dot thumbnail and let's just resize it to 200 by 200 it should be pretty much the same size uh, I'm just going from 220 to 200 in fact uh, a bit smaller let's say 150 uh, the second number doesn't matter uh, as you know when it comes to thumbnail so I'm gonna leave it to 200 so image dot uh, thumbnail this is fine we resize this now I would like to make a copy of my image one uh, and I'm thinking here which one to copy. I mean, sometimes I, I mess this thing up. So let's actually do image one underscore copy. And uh, what is my image one copy? This is nothing but image one dot copy. So what it does is now it assigns this image one. I'm, I'm just copying image one into another another name. And that, and, and that name is image one underscore copy. Now I wanna uh, do image one copy uh, dot paste it. Okay, and paste it onto what I want to on image one copy. I want to paste image two, and where do I want to paste image two? Let's just put it at 50 50 pixel so we can see it. So, again, this line is nothing but I'm copying image one, I don't want to modify image one, I'm copying image one, and on image one, on the copy of image one, paste image two at 50 and 50. Okay. That's pretty much it. And now we can go ahead and save this. So image one underscore copy. And I want to save this at images slash pasted image, let's say, dot JPEG. So let's go ahead and run this. So, okay, so it's printing the size and we should actually see pasted image uh, right there, pasted image dot JPEG. And let's go ahead and open this and you can see it right away right there that uh, you see the background image on top of this you paste this of course you can do other things like change the transparency and all of that and again do a Google search uh, and most of what I'm showing is obviously uh, you know has been done many 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 times uh, uh, if you search for this on Google you'll find similar examples uh, you know uh, everywhere uh, all I'm trying to do is put everything into one channel here so you have a streamlined way of learning, you know, uh, doing this image processing. But you can explore a lot more when you do Google search. So uh, we saved this uh, image. So let's go ahead and jump into a different topic. So we did, uh, uh, I think, uh, let's go ahead and do image rotation now, okay? Uh, and uh, image rotation is, uh, again, just like copy, just like crop, image rotation is nothing but dot rotate. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, but again, uh, let me go ahead and show that. So let's go back to our image being IMG, and let's rotate the image by 90 degrees. So IMG 90, let's say, equals, uh, equals uh, IMG dot R-O-T-A-T-E, rotate. Okay, by how much? By 90 degrees, that's it. Image 90 is nothing but this rotated 90 degrees. And now we can just uh, we can just save this, which is img 90.save. Uh, and uh, where do we wanna save this? Images, and I'm gonna just call this rotated 90.jpg. And now you should be able to see an image that is rotated by 90 degrees. Where is it? Uh, rotated 90 right there so when I open this you should see that this is actually it keeps the aspect ratio it just rotates it by 90 degrees in fact if I change this to 45 degrees let's say 45 degrees you should see let's call this image 45 rotated 45 you Okay, let's go ahead and open this uh, 45 degree image and you should see that it rotate the, uh, rotated the image by 45 degrees, which means it cropped these edges right there. Okay, we lost it uh, in the rotation. So if you wanna keep those edges, if you wanna rotate it, but uh, still keep the entire uh, image, then it is uh, uh, image.rotate45. In here, you can just say 
expand equals to true okay so rotate it 45 expand equals to true and when we run this mm -hmm, and uh, you can see it right away okay so now it's actually rotated but the entire we have all the original pixels uh, fit within this new window size so this is uh, uh, image rotation and now uh, what do we want to do uh, let's go ahead and flip the image transpose the image so let's keep the same image uh, up there and the way you uh, again I'm just introducing a few of these uh, functions that are already there there are many more go ahead and search for these online but let's just call this image uh, you can flip it in left to right or top to bottom okay so let's actually do left to right first image flip left to right equals to our image dot and the function is transpose transpose and now how do we transpose image dot and then it shows up what we can do uh, I think it's flip yeah you see that left to right right there so it's just left to right okay so this is it so our new image flip LR is nothing but this image flipped from uh, left to right okay uh, on our image it's probably going to be a bit difficult to see because the it's bunch of nucleus and we cannot remember uh, how the original uh, image looks like so let's go back to our monkey image because it's easier for us to see uh, the flipped images there so uh, let me go ahead and save this uh, uh, new image it's uh, let's call this dot save and images slash flipped lr dot jpeg okay and uh, let's go ahead before just you know instead of running this two times top to bottom I think that's what it was called and uh, this function again uh, when I hit dot it should come up with uh, all the all the functions within here so flip top to bottom yeah and now let's just do top to bottom flipped top to bottom JPEG and let's run this and we should see if everything goes well we should see a couple of new images and uh, uh, this is the uh, flipped left to right monkey this is the original monkey okay this is the original monkey looking to its right and now this is the monkey looking to its left and this is the flipped uh, one there's no point in opening these uh, uh, further so uh, now let me minimize this and this is how you can actually uh, flip your images and uh, let's uh, do a couple more change this image to grayscale actually so the way you change it to grayscale is uh, uh, just I mean grayscale is uh, uh, the command is L and uh, RGB you can also change it to RGB and it is just RGB and uh, you can also change it to CMYK so just type CMYK so let's just do gray level let's take this monkey image and convert that to gray level so when I say gray underscore uh, image equals uh, RIMG dot and uh, convert and L yeah this is where in fact I think I should do this uh, let's see if this runs I always uh, mess up with my quotations there but anyway so this is uh, uh, instead of L if you change it to RGB the image it's it is RGB right now but uh, it is going to be RGB if you have a gray level you want to convert that to RGB space then you can just type RGB here so for now let's just convert that to gray level and again uh, you know how to save this image gray underscore image dot save um, and uh, let's save this under images slash uh, I don't know gray monkey dot jpeg okay so let's go ahead and run this yeah and we should see a gray level monkey right there okay and this is how you can change images between uh, the color spaces so uh, and a lot more I can show this literally all day you can actually go to you know on the left hand side I have a uh, let's say a website that I would copy and uh, just show you you know uh, paste this just Google search for pillow image processing you'll find a whole bunch of things uh, uh, but uh, here is one uh, you know reference that at least I refer to uh, when I put together this uh, this video 
Uh, finally, what they don't have here, obviously, I mean, here they have like all various types of uh, functions that you can call, but uh, the whole point of uh, uh, doing this image processing or uh, coding is to automate the task onto, uh, let's say, thousands of images. So uh, I have a folder here called test images, and within that, let's just look at airplane. I have four images here. Let's do something with these four images. So uh, to go through the folder structure, I covered this in one of my previous videos. Uh, I use uh, a library called Glob, and this is, again, if you're uh, a Unix uh, user, if you have used Unix in the past, then glob is basically nothing but extract the file names as you go through the folders. So that is a, uh, a command that you use in Unix. So here, let's actually go through. Uh, and again, this is something we have done um, in one of the previous videos in terms of how to automate or how to go through multiple windows, uh, I mean, uh, images, how to open multiple images. So uh, first, let's actually set, uh, I mean, I uh, wanted to go through this file path you know, every file within that file path. So first, let me go ahead and define what I mean by path so I don't have to type this whole thing uh, later on. So in the path here is images slash test images slash airplane. And then I just want to go through all the files, so I'll just put star. You can just do only star.jpg, star.png. So if you if you have different types of files, you can just pick exactly which one you want to use. Now for file in glob dot glob, and uh, now here comes the path, and this is why I actually typed it uh, beforehand. So fi for file in this path, meaning it goes to this path and looks at all the files, and now we created a variable called file. So for each one of these. I just, let's go ahead and print file so we know exactly what's going on, okay? Let's uh, take step by step. Let me clear my screen on the right hand side. So when I run this, now you, uh, hopefully this makes sense why we have done this, yeah? So it's printing file. So file, the first iteration, it printed this, which is 1.jpg, 2.jpg, 3.jpg, 4.jpg. So if you have thousands of images, it goes through each one of these image. So now, instead of printing, what I want to do is, once it's inside, once the file number one is loaded, I want to, uh, let's go ahead and do image.open, uh, okay? And uh, let's do file. So let me go ahead and print this, I mean, run this one more time so you can see exactly what's going on. Uh, uh, it's actually opening each of these uh, files. Now we can read this file because we have the full full path. Okay, so uh, we opened this, but then what do we want to do now? Let's actually uh, let's actually um, by the way, let me close this so we don't confuse multiple things. Uh, let's go ahead and rotate these images. So rotated. 45 okay I'm just planning on rotating these images by 45 degrees a dot rotate and rotate by 45 degrees and let's just do expand equals to true okay now we know what that means so uh, expand equals to true true now we need to save each of these files separately okay so we don't want to overwrite the same file over and over again so the way, uh, there are many ways to do that. So I'm gonna do this rotated 45.save and typically this is where you just give some file name. But instead of file name, I'm gonna just say file plus, the file is nothing but this name, right? 1.jpg, right? The file plus, I just want to add uh, some text to this file name. So I'm gonna call this rotated 45.save png let's convert this to a png file okay and png so now let's go ahead and run this and see what happens and within this folder you see now we have additional files over there and when i open this you can see uh, well let's get into our test images airplane and here one.jpg and the file name for this one is one.jpg underscore rotated 45 well, it's saying 1.jpg because that is the file name. When I say file plus, 
that is the file name here. If you don't want that, you can actually split this file, the text inside the file, and then you can only take the first part and then add it. Again, that's extra lines of code. I, I'm a bit lazy right now, so I'm not going through that exercise. But this gives an idea. Takes original image, rotates this. And uh, this is how you automate the tasks, yeah? So we went through individual tasks that you can perform, individual image processing tasks that you can perform using uh, the uh, Pillow library. And remember, this tutorial is completely about Pillow. There are uh, a lot of other libraries which we'll talk about later on using Pillow. And this is the only time we introduce Glob because we want to walk through the folders. But otherwise, all the image processing tasks are using Pillow itself. And with, with uh, uh, Glob, we can actually read the file structure. Uh, by the way, there are other ways also. Uh, go ahead and Google search for os.path, for example. That's another way of looking at, uh, you know, going through these file, uh, folder structures. But uh, this is, again, one of the ways of uh, automating processing tasks for multiple images. So uh, I hope you found this uh, tutorial useful. And in the next uh, tutorial, let's uh, cover a different topic, probably uh, psychic image, and then we'll eventually get to OpenCV at some point. So thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, let's meet in a different tutorial.